Project Nigel. Presumably you got some idea of who I am, what I'm doing, but you don't know what I'm doing today, so I should tell you. I am on my way to lovely Donk, or Donkcaster as some people like to call it, to see my lovely friend Dan, to pick up a lovely rover. The journey should take about an hour and five minutes, uh, but I'm in my truck and I tend to stick at about 60 miles per hour because it's just too heavy on fuel otherwise. Now this car is not a complete car. I'm not uh, bringing it back to fix or put on the road. It is going for spares. It's had many parts taken up of it already by, by someone. And then Dan's had a few parts as well. And I shall make sure that it goes to the grave with nothing on it. Because it is quite a rare car. Well, according to the sign of the gantry there, the M62 is closed between junction 30 and 31. But my sat nav's not trying to divert me anywhere else. Not that I need the sat nav to get to uh, Doncaster, of course. Uh, I just wanted to see how long it would take. I do not my way around it. See that there? Stay home, save lives. A bit difficult to do while you drive along the M62, isn't it? Some of these phrases really are just a bit stupid. Stay home, save lives. What if you, uh, what if you drive an ambulance? What if you drive a police car? What if you drive a fire engine to a fire? Ideally, it could do with being distinguished then staying home wouldn't really help, would it? Yes! Deliberate misinterpretation! I know! It's not clever and it's not really very helpful. But I do find it quite funny and that's good enough for me. Over to the left there is the city of Leeds. A lovely place full of twisting, winding, roads right through the city centre. Tunnels and one-way systems clearly designed before somebody had the idea of satellite navigation because satellite navigation is not much use in Leeds and if you've ever been there and not known where you were going you will find it a bit confusing. I certainly did when I first went there. Last time I went to Leeds was very confusing because I was supposed to be in Bradford. I do hope it's sunny in Doncaster today and not like it is here, which is rainy. It'd be nice to get in there and it's all lovely, like a summer's day basically, that's what I like. It's asking quite a lot, I suppose. Yes, it's asking an awful lot. I'm being a bit too optimistic and I think it's even a possibility. According to the clock in my truck, the time now is 27 minutes past 11. I told Dan I would be there at half past 11, so that gives me three minutes to get there. And I think I'm about halfway there, so maybe another 30 miles to go or so. I don't reckon I'll get there on time somehow. Well, you'll never guess who I've just seen. Just driving past then, give me the thumbs up. Simon Cowell of all people. <laughs> Imagine that, eh? I'm sure he's a nice guy, really. He's driving a uh, Skoda Octavia Estate diesel. Looks like he had a plate on the back, as if it was a minicab. Maybe he's doing a bit of moonlighting, multitasking. Certainly multitasking there, because he was eating a sandwich, an egg sandwich. Bits of egg dropping down his. Uh, shirt. He had a, well, one of those stripy shirts like men used to wear in the 70s and uh, he was wearing it well because he had it buttoned down all the way to the bottom. So most of that egg was in his belly button. There was a man in the back as well so I presume he was you know a, a paying customer but he was also eating an egg sandwich so I can presume that Simon Cowell's a very generous man who's sharing his sandwiches unless of course the man brought the sandwiches and he was sharing it with Simon. Who knows? 
maybe sandwiches are his preferred form of payment. Because cash is so dirty, isn't it? You don't want to be handling something that someone else has touched. Yeah, I can imagine when he gets home and his wife asks him, you know, have you made much money today, taxi? And he says, I haven't made anybody, but I'm absolutely stuffed on egg sandwiches. It's all a bit presumptuous, this, of course, because I don't know. He might not even have a wife. I don't know anything about Simon Cowell. I don't know where he lives. I don't know what, what he does. He might not even really be a taxi driver. He might just be, I don't know, a jockey or something. Well, I'm almost here, and it is almost 12 o'clock. So I make that complete. Hello, there's Dan. Dan! 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 Dan's a fantastic man. No, he really is, though. He's just giving me this car. And you can't really see it, can you? Because it's too bright out the back. But you'll see it soon. Oh, yes. You will. Right. I wanted it to be summertime in Doncaster, and it is. My truck's struggling a little bit with the um, slopes here. And then you get someone pull out in front of you while you're going up a hill. Not nice! It's a bit more tiring driving back, if I'm honest. I mean, all that extra weight on the back and the way the truck slows down so much when going up the slopes. It just makes me really thirsty. I really want a cup of tea. And I've been trying not to talk about cups of tea recently because it just seems one of those things I do all the time. But I really want one. I want a cup of tea, first. I want a cup of tea. Wait, I want a cup of tea. 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 Yeah. Just going by Leeds again for the second time, this time on the way home. Still quite a long way up, of course, but I'm getting closer and closer to that lovely cup of tea. <sighs> About a mile east of Hartshead Moor services on the M62, there's a bit of a dip in the road, and you always get this smell of uh, like old wooden desks or something like school desks. That's what it smells like to me. Smell it every time I come down that way. Uh, so, do you know what I mean? Have you ever smelt it? Have you? Well, anybody else ever smelt that? Or was it just me? I can't be imagining it every time I go by. Strong winds. Well, that's good news because I thought it was just something wrong with my truck. I thought it was just swaying around because it was going wrong. But no, it's just getting blown around. Better. I just spotted something quite funny. Uh, there's uh, a couple of windows missing out of the car behind, and I can just see there the uh, headlining flapping about in the wind. <laughs> Okay, that's it till tomorrow. Um, but of course, you've watched all of this video and you still haven't seen the car, have you? So let's sort that out. Here it is, just briefly, an 820. 1998-20, which is quite rotten and just good for a few parts, really. There's no interior in there, it's just my ramps and the front bumper. I don't think this car would have fit on the uh, truck at all without that front bumper being removed. They were a very long car indeed. Anyway, more on that tomorrow. At the moment I've got to dash off to Rover Revival with a starter motor. So, let's see what uh, exciting things are going to happen there. I don't know whether I've finished off that video before reasonably sure it would have been a satisfactory conclusion 
to my day picking this car up. Oh, yes, I didn't even give it a name, did I? Well, I mean, I did, I didn't think of one. It's Project Larry. I didn't even film any of the process of getting Project Larry onto the back of the truck. And it's a pity, really, because it wasn't the easiest task going. The, uh, we thought the steering lock was stuck on and the, the wheels were slightly off. Um, what? But, uh, so we undid the, or, well, Dan undid the steering column. And as it was undone, it was working. And then once, and then it was not working again. It was a very strange thing. But, you know, it took, normally what would happen is if I'm going to pick a car up and the winch needs to be used, it, it could take maybe 15 or 20 minutes to get the thing on. But it took over an hour to get the car in the back of the truck. And some of that was chatting and eating bacon sandwiches. But... It's still quite a long time, I'm sure you'll agree. I'd like to say a big thank you to Dan for today and his wife Claire for the bacon sandwiches. They're both very, very generous people and it's very nice to, nice to know people that are nice people rather than not nice people. Nice to meet people like that. Thank you.